Hey artists, I wanted to talk to you about water-based clay. And there are different types of water-based clay. So the previous sculpture that I just did, the kneeling pose and even the standing pose, I did it with water-based clay without an armature. How to use water-based clay? There's very little use for building armatures inside. And I've been using water-based clay for quite some time. There are two types of water-based clay. There's the clay that I'm using right now, it's like red, and um, it does not have grog. And there is another sort of clay that you can get with grog. And grog is basically these little sandy sort of silica that's in the clay. And what that does is help firing. So if you're starting out in the beginning, you wanna get clay that's got a little bit of that sandy bits inside because that's going to help with the firing process. And I think for my next sculpture, I probably will get that sort of um, uh, clay because it's got a little bit of like particles in there. But um, what I don't like about it is that the consistency is less elastic than the clay that I'm using now. And clay varies based on location. So the water-based clay is very heavy, as you can imagine. It usually comes in 25-pound bags, and you can get it from just about every ceramic place. The key is you want to get low-fire clay. Um, and you can get grog with low-fire or without grog. So, But the key is the low-fire sort of clay. Going back to the types of clay, it really depends on location. I've been using red clay, but you can use white clay. There's like uh, gray clay. It's really like what's in the minerals in the ground. If you wanted, you could just go out in your backyard, dig a hole, and eventually, m most everywhere, you'll find clay. Uh, the clay soil is just everywhere. You go to a construction site when they are grading the house, you'll see all of that clay come to the surface. and you can use that, but the problem is it's kind of time consuming and kind of smelly to work with because you have to take those pieces of clay, get them wet, and then uh, make sure you filter out all the other particles. And usually these companies, they have like large machines that do it. So you can work that way and that clay is perfectly fine. But I tend to just get my clay from a local ceramics place here in DC, it's a, uh, it's a co-op, it's called Creative Clay, and it's in Alexandria. And with COVID, I just place my order, and when I go there, I pick it up outside in the, um, the dock. Experiment a little bit with the type of clay that you like. I do like the red terracotta style, but I've used uh, white clay before. What I don't like about white clay is that, you know, plaster looks kind of cool, it looks translucent, but with the white clay, it's so solid and opaque when you fire it that it loses a lot of the surface. But um, white clay is very easy to kind of see the forms around. So in a way it's easier when you're sculpting, but I just don't like the surface when it, you know, it fires. When it comes to armatures, you can pick to make an armature inside or without, but if you build a armature inside a water-based clay, then what happens is that as it dries, it contracts into that armature and then it just won't let go. So you, there are ways of scooping out an armature, but I find it way too tedious and you have to redo things over and over. So if you watch my videos, I tend not to build any armature with any water-based clay. And what I do is I scoop out the inside. So that's one of the super keys. You can fire water-based clay that's solid. And a lot of my sculptures should fire solid, but I like to hollow them out because it's less weight. And with less weight means that you pay less because um, if you take it to a ceramics place, they're gonna charge you per pound usually. But the best thing really is to have your own kiln because then you can control the heat yourself. And kilns are expensive, but I found that on Craigslist, you're able to get a kiln for like 50 to $100 if you look. The way I build my sculptures basically is 
using a cone. It's a system that you do see in Rodin, for example. There's a sculpture by Rodin called the Balzac. And the way to build it is, of course, you have to build it from the bottom up. But the way a lot of artists, including Rodin, did is they build a cone. And a cone will support a lot of clay and it's very strong. And you can do that for standing figures because the standing figure, you can put that cone directly through their legs. So my next sculpture is gonna be a standing figure and the shape of it is actually cone-like so it won't need that shape of the cone. But when you're like making an armature and when you're building a sculpture, you don't have to have an armature inside with steel and aluminum. You could build it with very rudimentary sort of things like this, just having some sort of prongs to hold it up. I do have another system, which is a sculpture or sculpture armature with an arm that comes up and it just kind of like holds it from the top. And I use that from sculpture to sculpture and I don't need anything else. You could just go to Home Depot, get like, um, the galvanized uh, plumbing pipes and build them at a, uh, with a bend here. And then you can use wire to kind of just hold it up like a piece of wood. And then afterwards, you just have to remove that little section of the armature. But a lot of times, I just like the very direct way that water-based clay works because Water-based clay is definitely the clay that you want to use when you're starting out because they're so, it's so cheap. $15 will get you, you know, 25 pounds. So it's probably the cheapest form of sculpture. And you can just keep, you know, reusing it if you want by putting the sculptures back in the bag and then re-wetting them. The downside of the water-based clay is that it gets your house really dirty. So your studio is going to get extremely dirty. I try to keep my area um, clean, but you can see that my sculpture stand is definitely quite dirty and there's a lot more particles in the air. But I find that if you are clean about it, you don't make an over, overly large uh, mess in your sculpture studio. Oil-based clay is a lot cleaner, but then you need different tools. Um, you know, you have to like heat it up in a microwave and then the process for the oil-based clay is that you have to get a mold because there's no way of reproducing it without a mold. There are clays that are, um, they're air dry clays, but they cost a lot of money. And I do have one somewhere here that I intend on using for a sculpture later, but because it's so expensive and it's so small, the only thing you can really do is small parts. Now there's polymer clay, there's like all of these plastic sort of clays that you can use. And there's even like clay like Sculpey that you can put in your oven and fire it. But I find that it's too expensive to really work with because if you're working at a large scale or even like a medium sized scale, it's difficult to get all that clay in there. And then you would still need an armature inside because you don't want to build it, the the whole process, the whole, you know, uh, character with a solid piece of clay either way, and then you have to put it in the oven. So this system with water-based clay, you just put it in the kiln. And if you don't have a kiln, you can just take it to any ceramics place. And there are many throughout, you know, every major city's got the few. Usually find that artists that do portrait sculpture will use water-based clay. The water-based clay does have an advantage over the oil-based clay. It's a very fluid sort of system of sculpture. Usually with oil-based clay, if, I kind of feel like the people that use oil-based clay, they tend to be more like the game character sort of sculptors. And there's like a little bit of a robotic way of sculpting with the oil-based clay. Um, maybe it's just me, but there is clay that is almost consistent with the water-based clay, but not quite. You can't really use brushes to, you know, do subtle details. And I think that a really good sculptor might want to stick with water-based clay because there is a lot you can do with water-based clay just by depending, by basing the dryness of it. With the clay getting harder, you can definitely do a lot more details. And then in the beginning with very soft clay, you can, 
pretty much be almost like virtuoso and create something that's impressionistic in your sculptures. So the water-based clay, it's got a bigger range of uh, techniques that you can use. The oil-based clay, I love it because it basically keeps everything clean <clears throat> in the studio. But there is this kind of lack of character that I find that uh, oil-based clay has. And I know that a lot of monument sculptors, they use oil-based clay. And I know one in particular, but I find that the work that comes out of the oil-based clay is robotic. Like uh, it feels very, it doesn't feel like life. You know, the cool thing about water-based clay, <clears throat> especially if you fire that water-based clay piece, to me, like that's a lot neater because you know like if I make one sculpture and I fire it that's one piece that exists you can by the way make a mold from the hardened piece afterwards but that's a whole thing but that one terracotta that was just fired that's the piece that the actual artist touched with the oil-based clay that's never the case it's always a reproduction of the piece that the artist touched. So there's a little bit of a more personal signature with terracotta. It's um, when you look at uh, Bernini's terracottas, that's Bernini actually touching those. But in the marbles themselves, Bernini is a, a different case, but like in Michelangelo's case, it was not him that was like touching the marble by himself. There was like a lot of people that were contracted to work on the sculptures. So in a way, the terracotta pieces, they are the most direct representation of a sculptor. And I always look at the terracotta, not as much as I do like a painting. It's not, it's, a, it's as if it's the drawing of an artist. You know, you learn a lot more from seeing drawings by a painter than you do by studying their paintings. At least I find that because it's the way they think. It's the most um, direct way. It's their ideas that are kind of flowing onto the clay or drawing. So a lot of times the water-based clay gives you the best of both worlds. And I think it's the most direct and you get like a very fine art sort of quality in it. When it comes to picking your subject, you know, it's a matter of what you like. And you can see in my last sculpture, I usually get banned from YouTube. Like I just put up a video yesterday and it was uh, taken down, the thumbnail was taken down. And that's something that happens with, when you do like figurative work, like I usually get those videos removed and thumbnails definitely removed, uh, banning from Facebook, even though they're just, you know, normal sculptures, but you definitely want to put clothes on something if you intend on putting it online. When you fire that sculpture, your work is still not done. There's many ways of staining sculptures, painting sculptures. And one of the sculptures I just did is the kneeling pose. And I fired it and there was no cracks, no breaks at all. So in a way, that's a little bit of a rare thing for me because sometimes there's like little parts that break and then I have to put it together with some blue. And I've done that for a lot of sculptures, but when I fire a piece and it doesn't break at all, one of the things I do like to do is highlight that terracotta. I don't want to like hide it. Um, but so one way to do it is just to put some sort of like wax on it so it looks a little bit shinier and protects it and seals it. But in the past, I've used sculptures and then I've experimented with different types of stains. Like I put like a bronzing sort of stain. You can do one that looks like marble. So you kind of have to experiment, but I, I tend to be like kind of quick with the way I do it because I just want to move on to my next sculpture. And you can get like spray cans from like a car shop, like black, spray it. And it already comes with like an enamel that's shiny so it does look good and then you can take like some metallic paint and just kind of brush over it and it does look fairly good straight away. Use acrylic paint to paint over your sculptures, oil-based clay to give it like 
layers of um, to make that look like anything you want. One of the things I'm trying to do next for one of my sculptures is to get get metallic bronze paint that really reacts with the patinas, including liver of sulfur. If you don't know what liver of sulfur is, it's kind of neat and um, it's a chemical reaction and it just turns your sculpture, uh, it looks like age. And that's kind of like what I want to do in the future. You need an armature inside a water-based clay. You can build it like straight up. And you have to kind of keep in mind also the types of sculptures that you do. There's sculptures or poses that are going to be much more difficult to do if you are just doing something without an armature. Standing poses are much harder because you have to support your clay. If it's like this big or however, um, it'll kind of fall. That's why you have like a system like this, but you don't do uh, kneeling poses, sitting poses, reclining poses. They're so easy to do with uh, water-based clay. And it's something that anybody can do. You kind of need a little bit of an armature to hold say a portrait, but that's really just a way of holding the clay up. And you can just like take a baseboard, put like a two by four and just kind of build it on there. But you just need something to kind of hold it while you're looking at it. Even then I have done sculptor, sculptures without armatures, like portrait sculptures. I've done them without anything. You can just build it up. But hopefully this helped out some of you. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.